During the offseason, the Toronto Raptors reclaim control of all of their future draft assets, meaning a huge trade could be on the cards this season, especially for a disgruntled star like Brandon Ingram. Over today's video, we're going to discuss how we could end up on the Raptors and if it's the right choice for the team. Let's get into it. It really is great timing for this recording because this video is going to be going out on September 4th, 2024, exactly two days after Brandon Ingram celebrated his 27th birthday, yes, on September 2nd, and he really is now starting to enter the prime of his career because I would consider the prime of most players' NBA careers to be between 27 to 30 years old, maybe 27 to 31 years old because they still have a lot of the athletic prowess from their early days but they have enough experience and the smarts to maximize that athletic potential alongside their skills in this little era. Now, obviously, some players are different. Some players peak earlier. Some players like, let's say, Kyle Lowry peak a little bit later on. But the grand majority of NBA player primes comes down to this age range here that Brandon Ingram is about to enter. And the Toronto Raptors could be the team that gets the full experience of Brandon Ingram's prime years if... They so choose to pull off a massive trade with the Pelicans over the course of the season. We're going to be covering what that trade might look like and if it is a good decision for the Raptors right here in my parents' house. I'm going to be here for a couple of weeks, so please forgive me for the lack of a great setup. I'll be back in my apartment soon enough. But we're doing this video here on Amateur Sports, the YouTube channel completely dedicated to Toronto Raptors content in videos just like this. Drop a like if you enjoy along the way and subscribe for more content like it. And a lot of the content will be in a much better setup, as I said. But... The reason I bring up this Brandon Ingram situation is, again, I thought it was pretty good timing because Brandon Ingram has just turned 27 years old, but the reality is the talented player, the one-time All-Star, is certainly on the trade block. He's going into the last season of his contract with the New Orleans Pelicans, as I said, and they're looking for a trade partner here. They don't really want to pay what Brandon Ingram is asking for, so there is an inclination suggesting that Brandon Ingram is going to become a free agent at the end of the season if no trade partner is found. Now, it's kind of going to be like the Pascal Siakam situation where the Raptors were kind of exploring a trade possibility for Siakam at this time last season, but the hiccup was Siakam was looking for a max contract and the team that would trade for him would know that and therefore would have to pay him that max contract to stay with their team. Obviously, there'd have to be some sort of handshake agreement behind the scenes between the team, the Raptors, and the player, Brandon Ingram, that he would re-sign and stay with the organization. But currently, Brandon Ingram is seeking a max contract that the Pelicans, and it seems like many other NBA teams are not really willing to pay him. Going into this season, Brandon Ingram is going to be making about $36 million. And for a player of his ability, that seems pretty fair. But the max contract is where the real sticking point is, as I said. That max contract with Brandon Ingram would look like this, a four-year contract worth $208 million. The Pelicans don't really want to pay that, but could the Raptors be the team that's interested in paying that? How would he fit with the team? Would it be a good fit? Is it one the Raptors should make? Before we go into all that, let's just see exactly what that trade could look like. So the Raptors certainly at the moment have players that they can trade as far as salary is concerned and they even have extra salary dumping ground in order to make the trade happen this season now as far as at the end of the season when they would have to give him a contract you'd have to rework some finances later on but as far as the trade is concerned it's really not that hard to pull off for the raptors to match the salary in this trade they would have to give up Bruce Brown and Chris Boucher. I feel like Chris Boucher offers some decent size that the New Orleans Pelicans are missing, would be a good rebounder coming off the bench. And Bruce Brown fits into really any team that wants to be a playoff team. He's the perfect sort of complimentary player to a lot of the stars in the team, like potentially Zion Williamson on the New Orleans Pelicans. He was really taking the reins of the team in the last season or so after really starting to get healthy. He was had a healthy season last year, which may have played a little bit on Brandon Ingram having a bit of a down year, would which maybe hurt his trade value in a way the Raptors could exploit. Obviously, these are two players the Raptors are willing to trade. Boucher and Brown are both in the final years of their contract, and their salary stacks up to about $33 million. And a trade would go through, but obviously the Raptors would have to add on some other assets. But for a player going into the final year of their contract, what sort of assets would need to be added on to that? Well, let's take a look at the trade the Raptors made with the Indiana Pacers when they traded away Pascal Siakam. This is a similar situation. Siakam, a multi-time All-Star at the time of the trade, so maybe having a bit more accolades on his side. You know, both players in Brandon Ingram and Siakam have been MIPs. 
Both have been all-star at least once. Siakam having done it twice. Siakam also has been all-NBA twice. He's uh, also, you know, won an NBA championship. But I feel like their value is going to be relatively similar. In the end, the Raptors got salary filler for Pascal Siakam with the picks that were involved where the trade were. The 19th overall pick, that was the Indiana Pacers pick for the season. They didn't know it would be 19th, but it was Indiana Pacers pick. It was a pick that eventually became the 29th overall pick and a future first-round pick from the Indiana Pacers, which was a 2026 pick. It kind of felt a little bit underwhelming for the Raptors, but ultimately, it was a pretty good return given the situation that Siakam was going to be becoming a free agent at the end of the season. But I think that the Indiana Pacers were a little bit more keen in giving Siakam the max than I think other teams are going to be right now in giving Brandon Ingram the max. I feel like the Raptors seriously have an opportunity to cut a deal here, and what that deal would look like to me is two first-round picks and a second-round pick. The second-round pick would be a really good second-round pick. It would be the 2025 second-round pick incoming from the Portland Trailblazers, which was acquired in the trade with the Sacramento Kings that involved David Mitchell, Sacha Vizenkov, and the 45th overall pick. So a really good second-round pick for the upcoming draft, and then it would be that 2026 first-round pick that came from Indiana in that Pascal Siakam trade, and it would be the Toronto Raptors 2028 first round pick which they currently own so two first round picks a second round pick the Raptors maybe can send this the way of the New Orleans Pelicans and if no better offer comes their way I think this is pretty good that 2026 first round pick is probably going to be in the mid tier of the first round like I said that second round pick is going to be pretty valuable right at the start of the second round on the second day of the NBA draft and a future pick down the line just for good measure here if this is something that can go through for the New Orleans Pelicans, is it one the Toronto Raptors should make? Let's assess what Brandon Ingram did in this down year really for the team. Again, this was a year where Zion Williamson was the healthiest he's really ever been, had more time on the floor. And when Zion Williamson is on the floor for the Pelicans, certainly he is the focal point of the team. Can't deny that. Ingram, who had previously averaged 23 points per game, 24 points per game, Went down to right about 21 points per game at 20.8. Added on five rebounds over five assists with a field goal percentage of 49% and a three-point percentage of 35%. But given the nature of Brandon Ingram's style, a real bucket getter on the floor, especially in mid-range. You know, he's been likened a lot to Kevin Durant so far in his career. Only has an effective field percentage of 53. I feel like that should be a little bit higher for a player of his ability. But again, given the way that he plays, he's at isolation score in mid-range that typically I don't love in a player. But I feel like every team kind of needs that guy who can step up and get a bucket for himself in isolation, which Brandon Ingram could provide. Which is why I am very interested in the possibility of the Raptors making a trade along these lines. As far as his fit with the team... He's a big player who I think can play in a lot of different roles. And honestly, I, I don't really see a lot of hiccups in making this work. Emmanuel quickly provides the point guard play. RJ Barrett goes back to the shooting guard position. And the way he's been playing as a slasher, as somebody who can hit threes as well, I don't think this clashes really at all with Brandon Ingram's game. Scotty Barnes is this fantastic piece for the team, but is he really going to be that number one score for the team down the line? I guess we'll see a little bit over the course of the season, and perhaps if he really does emerge as this 22, 23, 24 point per game threat, this conversation is a little bit different, but I don't think it's in his best nature to be that primary scorer. He can still be a guy who's the primary player on ball, but the primary scoring load can absolutely fall upon Brandon Ingram, who I think in a different setup and maybe even playing in the Eastern Conference could go back to those 23, 24 point per game seasons and could do so consistently throughout the prime years of his career with the Toronto Raptors. I think that the fit makes sense. Jakob Pertl will be the big man for that lineup. And this is not a trade that's going to happen right now, but potentially, you know, a little bit into the season as the Raptors kind of see what they have, as the Pelicans kind of see what they have. And if the Pelicans are willing to accept a deal like this, albeit it, it's a cut price deal, this is one that I would absolutely consider from the Toronto Raptors front. It really puts you in a position to grow with this young team. You're growing with the prime years of Brandon Ingram's career. Scotty Barnes is going to slowly build up, continually, continue. He's already at an all-star level, but can continually build up. RJ Barrett seemingly is on the upward trajectory, as is Emmanuel quickly for this team. And you have enough defense with this. You have enough offense and you really have that isolation bucket getter that it seems like the Raptors have been missing for a number of years now. 
is Brandon Ingram this high tier superstar player that you would look for as this number one solidified certified top option for a, a potential championship contender? Probably not. But how many of those are there really in the NBA? You really have a stacked lineup with these guys out there. So if the Pelicans are willing to go with salary filler plus two first and a second, I'm not sure they bite at that. But if from a Toronto Raptors perspective, this is something that I would absolutely strongly consider. I think Brandon Ingram flies a little bit under the radar. And I think with an opportunity to play in the Eastern Conference, he could be looking at more all-star appearances. It's just on Brandon Ingram. Would he come to the team and would it be for the max salary? To be honest, I'm not completely opposed. You get four years of Brandon Ingram throughout what I would consider the prime years of an NBA player's career, as I said, and you're getting him just over $50 million per year. Obviously, you know, it really hurts you financially in the sense that you got to pay Barnes a lot, Ingram a lot, quickly a lot, and RJ Barrett a fair amount. How are you going to really balance the team beyond that? But this is just a lot of star power, I think, that the Raptors could have. And it's a lot of star power that I think they could manage. And I think there's a lot of complementary talents here that could make the Raptors a force for the playoffs going forward in the Eastern Conference, only getting better year by year. So for me, I pulled the trigger on this trade. The ball would be in New Orleans' court. Would they go for this deal? You let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below because that's all for me for today. Drop a like if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to Amateur Sports for more Raptors content. And I will see you again next time for another video.